Welcome to the Citadel. Rail and now I'm on here with Citadel Catholic Media arming you with the Sword of Truth. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. We're continuing on in our series of The Family Matters. This is part seven. In this segment, we want to consider the wife of the family as a nurturer. Now, you know, if you go back to the, uh, the Genesis account of God's creation, whenever it gives a story of how God the Father is creating all of the world, all of the universe, and He creates the earth and the, uh, all the plants and animals, and then finally um, creates man. And uh, said, looks around and says that it is all good. But then he stops and says, but it is not good that man should be alone. So then he decides to create his crowning achievement. He creates woman. And as he was contemplating her creation, he would say that I want to create for man a helper or as in some translations would say a sustainer. Now if we look at Pope Pius XI's encyclical Casti Canubi from 1930 he gives us that wonderful analogy of a, uh, of a family as a body and says whereas the husband is the head of the family so is the wife the heart. And, you know, we could take that analogy a step further and say, well, if, uh, what, what is the function of a heart? The heart actually pumps the blood and throughout the entire body and, uh, and sustains and gives life and, and, and um, helps life to continue on in a very, um, a very powerful way. So if we look at the wife and mother in this sense, she is a sustainer of life. She enlivens the whole family. She can do this with her spirit, with her attitude of femininity. If she has that care and concern and that focus there on her husband and on her children, and, and she is using that nurturing ability that God has given her in her role as the wife and mother of that home. Now, the most fundamental way that we will see woman's nurturing gift and ability come out is in the sense of her as being able to give birth to children. And we, we see that as such a great privilege of being able to participate with God in helping to bring immortal souls into the world. What greater of a calling and, and privilege can there be for any being? That's why I'll often consider, you know, if we look, when we, we're talking in this series about roles in marriage, I consider my wife's role to be more important than mine in the sense of you have these, these immortal souls coming into our children and they are there forming them uh, and forming their conscience, forming their character as they bring these children into the world. But it is in their very anatomy that we can see that they are, they have the nurturing nature built into them for they can actually uh, feed and nourish an infant with their very own bodies. The bonding that they have with an infant the amount of self-esteem and emotional security that these infants develop by bonding with their mothers. No one can be a substitute for this. This is why the, the all-important sense of self-esteem for children is, uh, is so hindered whenever the, the mother does not give that necessary attention that these babies need. So we see here that in, it is in this sense that the wife and mother in, in the home has her greatest vocation, her highest calling, this, this such a sublime privilege to be able to bring children into the world. This is greater than any other uh, calling that there could be. And it, it goes 
back to the, um, the, the to the command of God. The first commandment He gives us in Genesis: "Be fruitful and multiply." And then later on, as, after Adam and Eve fail, then the uh, her opportunity and her role and her sense, the wife's ability to be able to um, to participate in her redemption is through the bearing of children, much in a sense as our Lord and Savior suffered and died for the life of our souls, so also does the wife and mother suffer in a sense to be able to give life to children. Now we see in society today that there is a, a bit of a derogatory attitude toward those who answer that call and and partake of that privilege to be able to give birth to children and dedicate their entire lives to it and and don't see the need or, or the um, or the any or don't have any interest in taking on a career and someone having a derogatory attitude toward the uh, the idea of, of full-time mothering is nothing but evil because um, there, there again there is nothing more powerful nothing more more uh, more sublime than the ability to be able to nurture in a family to be able to uh, give birth to children so I would say out to all young ladies out there if you want to be powerful your greatest power your greatest opportunity to to be powerful is to have children. This is your this is um, your highest calling, and this is something that um, that you're being called to. And it can be done in a very hidden and obscure way, because we know the saying that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, and this is very true. And so um, we leave you with that this time. Next time we're going to get together. We're going to talk about. The, uh, the provider for the family to provide for those children, the husband's participation in his redemption. God bless you.